morning, everyone. Oh, is, it is this good, good or bad? Okay. Would you rather have the, the mic? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'll use the mic then. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming so much. Uh, thanks so much for coming to our uh, council-hosted adult forum. Uh, we, we try and do this quarterly. I know it's it, it maybe hasn't happened that often, but uh, but we, we really like to you know keep connected with the congregation. Um, get feedback and tell you kind of what what we as a council are doing. Um, so I, I kind of anticipate a lot of a lot of discussion today. So uh, why don't we go ahead and just get started? You could you could tell by my first slide that I, I am a graphic designer by trade. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. They don't let me do that. Um, so the first thing I want to do is. Um, kind of tell you a couple of things that we're excited about as a council and, and what we want to kind of move forward with as a congregation. Um, the first thing uh, you can see here is the Montana Interfaith Power and Light. Uh, what, what this is is an organization that, as, as it states in the title, is interfaith. Uh, I believe it was started as an Episcopal, uh, where's Roxanne? That was correct, as an Episcopal, uh, power and light organization, um, and then spread to multiple faiths, and now is covers many, many faiths across many, many states. Um, I, I believe it's 41 different states that it's in. Um, this is the Montana uh, chapter, and uh, we would like to, as a uh, council, have our congregation join this uh, collective of churches and faith communities in promoting um, clean energy and creation care. Um, you can see, I'll wander off camera here, uh, one of our core values that we've defined as a congregation is care of creation, creation care. Profound reverence and awe for all of God's creation as demonstrated by our commitment to protecting and preserving the natural world in all its beauty and abundance. And as a council, we feel that this is one of the ways that we can be involved in that, um, be, a, be a part of this organization. Um, it, it has several components. Uh, it has a community learning, um, education component. It has an activism um, component. And, um, and it has some advocacy and um, like event news um, that, that we'd, like to be, we'd like to be a part of. Not only that, go to our board and staff. Our own Roxanne Hoblet is on the board. <laughs> so uh, as a council, we feel like this is a, a very promising, um, promising organization that we can become a part of and help grow. Um, hopefully, we'd be able to you know, add to their knowledge. I mean, we've already gone through the, the process of getting solar panels in. Um, and we know what what that process entails and, and what what it can do for what it can do for your church and, and community. So um, hopefully that we'd be able to get back to that uh, organization as, as much as we get out of it. Um, so that that's kind of the first the first uh, part of that. And you can see um, there's part what you, you probably can't see. Sorry, um, but but the uh, partnership involves uh, essentially just. Being, being a part of that organization. Um, by joining with them, you're connected to hundreds of Montanans and thousands of others affiliated with the 40 states and the IBL chapters. Um, so th this is something that we're actively uh, actively looking to do as a council and, and hopefully as a congregation. So uh, any any questions or comments about that? Awesome. Yeah. Is that just a membership thing and what is the cost? Uh, there, there, there's no set cost. Uh, they do have a suggestion of, of donation to the organization, and for a uh, church of our size, of about a three hundred thousand dollar budget, it would be about three hundred dollars a year, two to three hundred dollars a year. That would be that would be the cost associated with it, and that's for um, you know doing paying paying for their publications and things like that that would come to us. Yes, Pastor Lindy. And add in also, there is a group called Lutherans Restoring Creation, which I don't know if you're coming to that. I have I haven't okay. done I haven't done enough research on it uh, Which is also a group, I mean it's ELCA congregations doing things 
um, more exclusively in a Lutheran key, they are not mutually exclusive. Right. So we can do both sets of, I mean, it, oh, there's a ton of, you know, you draw the Venn diagram of that and there's a lot of overlap. So Very much. We'll do both. All right. Thank you, Pastor Lindy. Any, any other questions? Um, if you have questions about the organization itself, I'm pretty ignorant, but Roxanne, I'm sure, would be happy, <laughs> happy to talk with you about it. Um, and uh, as, as I am, I'm going to talk with, with Roxanne today uh, about, you know, what exactly it means as a, as a congregation to, to become a member. Uh, we're pretty, this was, a, it's a pretty new thing for, for the council. We're, we're just kind of exploring, um, exploring it, but it's something we think is very promising. Questions, comments? Yeah. Yes, Bill. You know, my wife and I have been considering increasing our benevolence uh, in light of the fact that our church is kind of under the gun on our, on our finances. And uh, this church has always been a very giving church. <coughs> point of view, looked up the various things, you know, we always seem to be at the top of the list, at least per capita. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my concern is that anytime one of these things comes along, oh yeah, we'll get it. And uh, I have to, I have to give that second thought I mean, we've, uh, we've thought quite a bit about, you know, how much we give mm -hmm. and what we might be able to increase. And uh, I'm concerned that we don't... We're spreading our, ourselves our through thin. Our yep, no, and, and, and I, would, I would just say to this, that this isn't, uh, at least in, in my mind right now, is not a, a beneficiary of, of the congregation. This is more um, just saying that our congregation aligns with the beliefs of, of this organization. Um, and in fact, the, the $200, I believe it was, uh, for, is a suggested donation um, per year. We, we, we wouldn't be essentially holding to that and, and we wouldn't be giving our benevolences essentially to, to the, these organizations that we're talking about, that I'm talking about today. They wouldn't be added beneficiaries of that. Um, so, so in theory, they're they're not going on to um, our benefit list on our uh, yearly spending plan. Is my understanding, Bill? What I'm saying is that I'm just using this as an example. Yep, I, I get. I mean, this mm -hmm. is not two hundred dollars. I mean, I'll give you two hundred dollars. Right. You know, but uh, my. My concern is that we we need to we need to check our attitude in light of where we are financially. Yep, sure, Mark. I kind of like to build on Bill. Build on Bill. That's how we do Mark, thank you for your leadership. I think you've done a wonderful job and. What you said last Sunday was very, very um, becoming, and I think becoming for the church council. But I'd like to say something. Uh, there was a uh, Wall Street, you know, a New York Times article this week that said the church has lost its brand, its brand. And that means a real challenge for all of us who are part of the church. We know that 30% of the population are nuns. They, nuns, not N-U-N, but who are no way affiliated with a church or a worshiping community. And above that, there's another 30% that don't have anything to do. They don't worship, they, they believe. Um, I did a presentation in the basement of Old Rosary, and one of our leading community members in Bozeman came up to me and he says, what do I do? My grandchildren are not baptized. 
And I won't tell you my answer, but I do have an answer for that. And I think the answer can come from who we are as Christ the King with your church. Another person, a friend of mine, has three, four children, grown children. Two of them are in the church, two of them are not. He has nine grandchildren that are not baptized. Now, why is that? I think it's because there's a whole culture in our community and in our culture that is pushed away from the church. They don't get it. And we have a challenge here to really get it and show that we get it. And what you've been talking about right now is witness to what we are doing in this community. People ask me, when you go to church, they say, Christ the King. And they say, oh, you know what that is. That's how I understand. Let's live with that. And let's be more for that. And be more representative of who we are as a church and who we are as people who bear the title of Christian. My teacher. Thanks, Lord. Um, actually, that's a great segue into our next um, our next uh, exciting ministry or, or partnership, and that is reconciling with uh, uh, reconciling in Christ. This is a Lutheran organization. Uh, and how, how many how many here were um, were here for the adult forums with Professor Bruce? What 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 came up like in ninety percent of what he said? Inclusion versus exclusion, right? And I think, I think as, as a church, we know what we want to be, right? I mean, I think I want to be inclusive. And that's really all, all that reconciling in Christ is about, is being inclusive. Uh, you know, it, it, it focuses on the LGTB, uh, LGTBQIA plus community. Thank you. <laughs> but, but it kind of goes beyond that, too. I mean, they've expanded. They, it, it, it was a, a originally just LGBT, um, and then, or LG, and then uh, trans folks were like, why aren't we included? And they've updated. You know, Reconciling in Christ said, no, they should be included. We want everybody to be welcome. And so they expanded their charter. And it really, it really is moving towards inclusion on all people that are pushed to the margins or uh, don't don't feel welcome in in most churches today. Um, and and so what this partnership does is the, it's a process. It's it's not just it's not just jumping in and saying we're a welcoming church, but it's a process. There's there's education. Uh, there's um, you know. Learn, learning how to talk with with uh, people who may not have the same view, um, just m moving in a forward direction towards inclusion, um, and then after after you feel like you've you've made that that movement towards inclusion, we can craft a welcome statement for our congregation that says, you know, who 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 are we? We're, we're a Christian community that, that welcomes everyone, um, and and everyone has a has a place at our table, um, and so so we're really excited about this. Uh, you know, it, you can see that it says you are not alone, and and I think that that's you know a lot of a lot of people who are pushed to the margins, um, in in a faith community feel like they're alone, and and we want them to know that they're not. So that's that's really our impetus behind behind working with Reconciling in Christ and, and becoming a Reconciling in Christ church. Um, I also thought it was apt, looking directly at their website, the latest church to join the Reconciling in Christ partnership was Christ the King from Houston, Texas. So I thought that that was maybe a, a sign, you know, that was the Holy Spirit moving and saying that, that, that maybe we should uh, get this process going. Um, and getting the process going, um, we are forming a kind of leadership team of that. And, you know, hopefully in in the in the long run, everybody in the congregation will be involved. Um, but we do kind of need to get some training and get um, a leadership team going. And uh, our own Barry Jaidi is, and he's raising his hand, um, is 
heading that and would love to have some volunteers to be on his leadership team. So if you're interested in that, talk to Barry. Um, there's going to be some training on June 3rd, I believe, that's, uh, and that'll be here. Um, so if, if you're interested in, in being a part of that leadership team, talk to Barry and, and he'll get you um, squared away on that. Are there any questions or comments um, about reconciling in Christ? And Hope Lutheran actually is already a partner with Montana Power and Light, in case you want to, uh, where's our part, our partners. Here's some, of the, here's some of the faith communities that are already partnered there. You can see Hope, Hope is already a partner. So if you have friends at Hope and want to know, you know what, what this means to them, feel free to ask them and, and chat with them. Uh, and yeah, and Hope is also working with RIC uh, at the same time. So. As, as one Lutheran body, I think it'd be great as if we could all, you know, kind of be in, in step together. So, any other comments or questions about RIC? Yes? I had a professor once who explained the core values that we have, the core value, and then the, the lesser important values that we hang on to. They go up from there. And we clutter that core value with all kinds of things. I wonder if it would be helpful to teach people that. The only thing that's in our core value, the way I read scripture, is love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. That's it. The other things we have to compromise on. We don't compromise on that, but we, when we put our beliefs about <laughs> race and whatever in that core value, we get all mixed up. Thank you. I think, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, love, love God, love your neighbor. That's pretty much it. All right, any, any questions? Sure. All right, then I will move on to the topic that we had started talking about. Um, I, I, last week I just gave a, a brief, uh, very brief, uh, blanking on the word, sorry, um, talk, just, uh, about about our financial situation and, and that the council was a little bit concerned about um, about how our how our uh, first quarter went and are projected through through the summer um, and so I was just going to give a little more detail on that in case anyone's curious um, so this is our treasurer's report from 2022. Um, and nobody can see it because it's just a little tiny type. Um, but I can kind of break it down for you. Um, our, our total income for the year last year was uh, three hundred sixty-four thousand. Our total spending last year was three hundred ninety-three thousand. So, just just by those numbers, you can tell. Not, not as much coming in as going out. Um, and then the first quarter of this year, the first, the first quarter is in this one column in here. I will try and blow it up as much as I can. So this is still labeled. I don't know if that's any better. But you can see in the first, in the first three months, our, our income was about $88,000, $89,000. But we spent about $110,000. And if, if you crunch the numbers on that, it's a little over 20% uh, above what our income was. Um, there was a few kind of outliers, however. Uh, you can see the building and grounds had some pretty large expenditures uh, that aren't typical. There was, there was some rework for toilets and some other, some other major work that, that needed to be done and was in that first three months. Um, in April, you can see it, it was less. Um, adjusting for that, say, saying that you know April was more a typical month for our for our uh, building and grounds and, and those type of things uh, than than our first quarter, we would get about an 11 percent uh, is is what we outspent uh, in the first four months. 11 percent uh, greater expenditures than, than income. Um, I guess I don't really have an answer for that. Uh, you know, we, 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 we can look at 
what are sorry the other other tab our spending plan what we say we're going to spend I'm sorry I know it's it's tough to see but what, what we say we're going to spend uh, I'll, I'll just break it down green is good red is bad <laughs> um, we can see that yeah. <laughs> so so if you if you look uh, at what we say we're going to spend by this time of the year and what we've actually spent, we're below in most categories. And overall, we're below um, what, what our projected spending is. But like I said during our, our talk last year, I think our, our income has been essentially steady for the last two years, um, which, which is good in that we're not, you know, steady is okay, but Everything, everything costs more, and I, I know everybody knows that. And you know, costs are going up, and incomes aren't, and it's really tough. Um, but they, that's just kind of the reality of, of what it is. And uh, a big part, a big part of it is, is that you know, we're, we decided as a congregation that we wanted, you know, full-time uh, children, youth, and family director. Uh, JP was at halftime at the end of the year last time, and we brought a full-time person on. So the payroll expense went up. Um, those type of things, you know, they, they cost money. And and when we when we all agree as a congregation that this is the spending plan we're going to put forward, it, it I feel like as a church we're not spending more than we said we were going to. We're not we're not run out and I mean Pastor Lindy didn't just go out and buy a Ferrari, you know. She bought a Highlander. <laughs> But uh, so, so I, I guess I, I feel like um, the, the church isn't going crazy with spending. You know, we, we're spending less than, less than we said we were going to. And that's, that's kind of been a trend. Like if we look at the spending plan from 2020, I was hoping there was a graph we could look at. But, but essentially, it was the same way there. We didn't, we didn't spend our spending plan. And, and we didn't quite make budget, but not as badly because the the gap between what we said we were going to spend and what we actually spent was larger than it is this year. Um, I want to, sorry. Okay. Um, that's not the graph I wanted. There's a spending plan graph somewhere here. There we go. So you can see here, here, here's what our spend, the blue line is our spending plan, and the orange line is what we actually spent. And this is in 2022. So you can see that there was a pretty sizable gap between what we said we were going to spend and what we actually spent. And that essentially kept us afloat. Now if we look at 2023, the same graph, you can see that we're not spending as much. Yep, and, and, and Barry's right, there's very, there's a much smaller data set here. I mean, we've got four months essentially, but um, we're spending <coughs> less than our than, than we said we were going to spend, but it's much closer. And that's just due to, like I said, bringing on full time uh, children, youth, and family director, and just rising costs. Um, so that's really what I wanted to say about it. Um, I guess. Uh, I don't have I don't have too many more um, you know statements. If if there were some questions, yes. Is it mostly just cash flow? Is that the issue? Do we just have people that are paying a lot at the end of the year? No. Yeah. The end end of the end of the year does we do see a big bump at the end of the year. Uh, typically, that's mostly just Christmas services. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, it's pretty it's pretty uniform. Summer it drops down, obviously, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think it's just a, a timing issue. Yes, Mark, I appreciated your comments last Sunday about transparency, mm -hmm. but I have been complaining about that for four or five years. I would like to see monthly transparency. What was the income? What were the expenses? How does it relate to the spending plan? 
because if people see we're behind, they might up it a little rather than waiting till we're virtually in a crisis, right. which we sort of are now. It's harder to make a big catch up than little catch ups yep. as you go along. I agree. I would definitely like to see a report every month what the income and expenses were and how that relates to the spending plan. Uh, sure, and, and we, we talked about that. Uh, for a long time, uh, we were reporting that uh, essentially weekly on, on the bulletin. Um, we went away from that because we really kind of think the bulletin and especially like the announcement sheet um, are, I, I don't want to say geared towards, but, but very visitor facing, right? And, and we don't necessarily want to, you know, throw our budget in a visitor's face the first time they're here. It, but, it could be in the Friday letter at the yep, end of the month. And, and, and that's, that's what we discussed at the last council meeting, uh, is, is getting an actual, we've had, we've had kind of a text breakdown, you know, like, oh, here, here's where we're spending and things like that, but an actual, like you said, account balance, or not balance, but uh, here's what our spending was for the month, here's what our projected spending was for the month, here, here was what our offerings were, um, and then compare that even to last year. Uh, and, and I think that's the plan, Barry, is that correct? That they were going to be publishing that in, yeah. in a monthly, in the monthly newsletter, the, the email that goes out. So, yeah. so that'll be more visible. We provided, we provided text, I think. Yeah. So I think that text may have been lost a little bit, so again, we'll try to get it more graphical, sort of, <coughs> so you can look at it real quickly and say, exactly, see exactly where we're at. So we can see where we're at from the budget. And then uh, additionally, I, I, we had discussed posting the same, just kind of a small breakdown, you know, not, not every line item like we have for this, but just kind of the totals uh, on our church council bulletin board over here. So we could just put it so like during a coffee hour, you could go and look at it too, uh, for those who don't read the, the weekly or monthly newsletter. Uh, so hopefully we're addressing that for you. Yes, Bob. Just a word of encouragement to all of us. Luke 638 is a guiding verse for me whenever I can deal with church funds and giving. Give and will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use will be measured to you. I approach my giving person without any fear based on verses. Yes, um, well, not, not, maybe. Um, 
So the, the spending plan is kind of put together based on, on what uh, the spending plan is was from the previous year, you know, what, what we know we're going to do. Um, and then any, any major changes, you know, like bringing on extra staff or things like that get added to the spending plan. Uh, and then um, any changes in like our benevolence is like if we decide to, you know, we're, we're adding, you know, uh, run for your life or, or something like that. We'll, we'll add those to the spending plan. Um, and then the, the council all agrees, you know, on the spending plan uh, and then presents it to the congregation during the annual meeting where it's voted on or amended and then accepted. Uh, it is just that, a spending plan. It's not a, it's not a budget. Um, you know, this is, it's just kind of an intention of where, where we see the money going and, uh, you know, what we want to, what we want to give to. Um, is that, does that answer your question, Pat? Sorry. Okay. I, I didn't really have a great answer, but uh, it's the one I have. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Bill. Some people have a financial situation where um, the monies that they they live on are taxable. Mm -hmm. They're uh, they're in an IRA or, or something that's like not a Roth, but mm -hmm. the, the type the type that when you take the money out of taxable. If you want to talk to me, I'd be glad to visit. But uh, if you if you take money out of an IRA or a similar type of investment that's taxable, and you have that money given directly to the church or to wherever your uh, uh, charity is, uh, it's not taxable. It's not taxable, period. So let's say that you gave $1,000 to the church over the course of a year, and it came out of a, uh, one of those taxable investments, that you don't get taxed on that money. So it, 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 it Yeah, that, that's, that would be, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would be very interested in, in setting that up. And, and Bill would be willing to chat with people. Um, chat with Bill. Yes, Pastor Wendy. Just an FYI around that, towards the end of the year, like November, December, because the IRS cutoff date is December 31, um, you'll see in the week, the Friday email, a couple of, I don't, I try not to run this, try not to put the same exact thing in week after week after week, but you'll see something about RMD, the required minimum distribution, because depending on the setup of your account, um, after a certain age, you're required to withdraw a certain amount, and if you're like, I don't really, I mean, that's, so that's another way, um, another time to maybe think about that. So you'll, you'll get a, a, a flip reminder from the email, um, but it's, I mean, Bill's point is well taken. It's, it's not, you know, you don't have to wait until December the 29th to think about that. <laughs> Thank you. Stephanie, did you have another question? Well, I just have two. Okay. A comment on that, because we all, we use that mechanism. I always consider that the fact that I don't have to pay tax on something means I can give more. Um, give the tax money that I would have to pay. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things you think about in your mind. Um, is there, you talked about rounds, and, and this is like the second or third meeting I've come to where building and rounds um, has come up. Is, is that a significant issue because of the age of the building, and is it something we're going to have to address um, at a higher level going forward, such that we should take that piece out and figure out how to fund that, maybe, or, or make projections and, and maybe separately figure out how to fund that? That is an excellent question, and um, one that we're currently working on. The building and ground scheme right now is taking uh, a comprehensive inventory of the building, what what in the next you know three to five years might need you know up, update, replace, um, and then you know five to ten years, and, and we're looking at that. Um, this all kind of came up from uh, the need for paint on on our west wall. Um, it's it's starting to to, to look its age, uh, especially on the sun side. We got some quotes for that, and they were. Frankly, more than more than we had or wanted to spend, you know. 
Um, so, so we decided to you know take a look at the building. It's almost 20 years old. You know, coming up on 20 years old. Seeing what needs to be, what maintenance items need to be looked at, and then hopefully breaking that out into maybe a capital campaign for a for a spruce up your church or you know maintain your your building or something like that. Um, something to look out outside of outside of our operating expenses budget, um, and and it it could be you know. We, we may need to replace furnaces or you know paint paint a side of the building or stuff like that. And things are and those things are very expensive. So um, my, my question goes um, a little bit deeper. Because okay. I look around the congregation. Um, recognizing that these conversations 
conversations are difficult and important, and that everyone is engaged. And so on behalf of stewardship, um, small but mighty team, I want, I get to do the asking and the thanking a lot. Um, I do generally, as council member, I'm into the looking in details, but the, so stewardship highlight, I want to make sure that we end this conversation on a positive note in saying that this is a, a growing and beautiful congregation and we are um, ministering the way that we've been taught and the way that we live every day when we come together as a group. And so while we have some financial issues to work through, as, as we do as a congregation, I have no doubt that we will continue to give joyfully and share our talents joyfully. So as much as, as we say, you know, X dollars have gone up X percent, and which we do take into consideration in the spending plan, and guess what, they went up more than we had anticipated, right? As all of your expenses have as well. But I wanna make sure that we continue living in the, in the good news that we are as a congregation. So while we are asking things of one another in our communities, I can also get the good news of telling you that, that we do this together and um, we can do difficult things together and have hard, hard conversations and, and continue to, to do the work. Um, although we, we may be asking more of people or differently of people, I have no doubt exactly to the point what, what guides us. I'm not, I'm not fearful. Um, I'm proud of us and excited for what we'll continue to do. So. Thanks. Oh, Jerry, did you have something real quick? Yeah, real quick. Sorry. Um, the council takes time to develop a spending plan. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, we used to take the time to have us as individuals think about what our spending plan is. We used to call it something like a pledge time. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't do that. We haven't done that so for a while. And I don't, it's not pleasant, but at the same time, it's a time. Now is the time to think about that. And this year, for example, we didn't have such a time. Why? Why? I, I don't have a good answer for you, uh, Jerry. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe that's something we, we need to we need to visit now. Maybe that's let's let's look at that and we'll take that in consideration and, and have it. I'm, I'm not absolutely certain it's essential, but at the same time. Sometimes it works for us, and sometimes it works. Yeah, I, we should, today, this is the time we have to think about that. Otherwise, they just put it off, put it off, yep. put it off. And dedicate, dedicate some time to, to you know, prayerfully think about it. Well, and in all fairness, we've been talking about when we started looking at the, the needs of the building, we recognize, stewardship recognizes, we're going to be making some asks. Mm -hmm. And it's going to feel like we're going to ask this month, and we're going to ask next month, and we're going to ask the next month. And so, it, at least in terms of building the grounds, that was an intentional conversation where we said, let's gather the data, let's gather the bills, and then let's come up with some options and discuss. And so we said, is it as simple as a capital campaign? We're not sure, right? So the, the, these conversations will continue. So my warm blessings of saying I'm not worried also mean we're thinking about it. Yep. And we recognize we're going to have to ask hard things of people but we will do it together and, and know that, that we can do this. But you know, we, there will be a lot of asks likely coming up, or maybe one big one. But just know that that will be part of the conversation moving forward. Thank you, Katie. Yes? I just want to have everybody thank Don for all the work she does. And there's Don right now, so yeah. give her a round of applause. <laughs> so I don't want to cut anybody short, but I did have one more thing I wanted to do. Um, at your tables, uh, there should be a, a council person. If there's not, could a council person move to a table? Or could we get you know some conglomeration together so that there's a council person at each table? And, and, and I, I wanna get I wanna get feedback. I wanna get feedback from you. And and I just have some discussion questions that um, are pretty basic and you don't need to you know stick to these. But I wanna know. What are some bright spots that you see in CTK? What are some areas that you'd like to see the church focus on? Um, any specific examples, uh, you know, engagement. Um, and then, are you a member of a small group? If, if so, great, what, what small group is that? And if not, what, what kind of small group would you be interested in? And what can we do to facilitate that? And, and feel free to, to let your council person at, at your table know about those things. So, um, and then, 
I guess when you're done, I'm, I'm done speaking, so um, when, when you're done, feel free to join congregate or join a. Uh, uh, Two things. 